I want to talk a little bit about Julia Child. Of course, we loved Julia. We had enormous respect for her. Michael was at Berkeley as a student. He was like 18 years old. He was a sophomore or freshman in the French department, classics department, Greek department at Berkeley. He wanted to become a chef. So he wrote to Julia at her TV station in Boston. I think I still have the letter, or I think I gave the letter to the Schlesinger Library at Harvard. I think it's in the files there. Anyway, he wrote her and said, you know, I'm Michael James. I would love to, to become a chef. What do you advise? And it was a hand, it was a typewritten letter. And it said, you must go to France. And of course, Michael was partly French. He was half Greek and his mother was half French English, but really French in that her family still existed in France. And they had owned the Chateau La Loire Valley and they were very important people in France. And they, they owned Maison Francaise, House and Garden magazine, one of his cousins was the editor, uh, and they were DuPonts from the chemical company. Very nice people, by the way, all of them. Very welcoming to me and everything. And so he took this letter from Julia, and he took it to his parents, and he said, I want to go to France, and I would like your financial backing and your blessing, and I've talked to my Aunt Francoise in Paris, and she will introduce me to people in France, and she will help me get apprenticeships in Paris at restaurants. And I don't want to go to cooking school. I want to have on-the-job training. I think that was part of Julia's advice, too, don't go to cooking school. And so they did. They bankrolled him. His mother was enormously wealthy. They sent him off to France. So it was because of Julia. And then his aunt, Francoise, took him to the Gourmet Society for Women in Paris. There she sent Wasimka. They had lunch, a lunch once a month, I think. And she said, Simka, I have with me my, my nephew, Michael James, who is an American, born an American of our French family, and he speaks fluent French, and he wants to become a chef, and I'd like you to meet him. And so when it was over, they came outside, and they went to a little cafe, and they talked for a couple of hours, and Simka said, you come to my house tomorrow, We'll talk some more, and he did. And she hired him on the spot. She wanted to write a new book. She was having trouble with Julia. Julia wanted to cut her out of the, the royalties for Mastering Art of French Cooking, Volumes 1 and 2. It did not succeed. She hired a litigation lawyer in New York and sued Julia. It never went to court. It was sold outside of court, and they split, as they always had contractually, the royalties of Mastering, both 1 and 2. Julia always said it was Paul that made her do it. Simka never believed it. Simka was absolutely brokenhearted. It wasn't because of the money, because Simka was independently quite wealthy. She inherited from her mother controlling interests in Boulanger Champagne and in Benedictine liqueur and real estate and an incredible house in the Quasi Vincan and on and on and on. And uh, Julia did not like Michael at all. He did everything to break up this friendship between Simka and, and Michael. And then we announced the opening of the Great Chefs of France in the Napa Valley, and Simon Beck was the first teacher. It got enormous press, and a lot of people attended. It was $1,500 for five days, which was, that's what it cost to put it on, and we divided it by the cost. And anyway, to make a long story short, it was a very expensive cooking school, and Simka arrived at this beautiful house that we had rented. It was the banking family that owned the Drexels, very, very multi-billionaire family uh, of bankers out of Philadelphia. And they had bought this house, they did this property. It was a Victorian house. Pamela Drexel absolutely hated the Napa Valley. She loved New York, she loved Philadelphia, she loved San Francisco. She had the good taste to hire Sister Parish to decorate the house. It was decorated right down to 10 sets of Limoges china for 40 people a piece and per setting and uh, beautiful Lali crystal and on and on and on and on. And, and the house was just absolutely beautiful. And so Simka came and she was there a couple of days. The students hadn't arrived and the phone rang. I answered the phone. It was Julia. And I went and got Simka and Simka got on the phone and Michael and I were busy in the kitchen and 
Cynthia was on the kitchen phone, and she motioned to Michael, get on the other line. And Julia didn't hear, couldn't hear her. And there was an extension in the dining room that was had a long cord in it. And there was there were two telephones there. I was on one listening. Simka was talking to Julia, and Michael on the other. And Julia says to Simka, Simka, you have got to stop this this friendship with Michael and Billy. They are bad news for you. They'll be bad for you. I want you to know that they are into S and M sadomasochistic leather sex and they get all dressed up in leather and chaps and they go to these places and they have sex in public and on and on and on and I hung up the phone and so did Michael and Simka uh, tore into Julia like do you leave me alone I've had problems with you before do not talk to me like that I know what I'm doing it's a bunch of lies what you're telling people are telling you about Michael and Billy and on and on and on and and Julia after that you know it was it was enemy number one she did come and teach at our cooking school with, with great chefs of France at the Robert Mondavi winery she she would never teach with Simka she would never appear anywhere with Simka they would be invited to appear at places in public and they very seldom ever did Julia started a few years later she started a foundation I can't remember what it's called I think it still exists. And she was looking for a director. And so she would do phone interviews uh, over the phone from San Francisco. They would be recorded by a technician or a friend or somebody like that. There's this guy that applied and uh, Julia interviewed him on the phone and it was recorded. And by mistake, the recording machine was left on after the phone call, Julia said, I don't want any pansies or fairies like that guy around me. We need to get rid of all gay men and lesbians in the food world, and particularly professional chefs. There's no room for pansies and fairies and gay men in the professional cooking. So my objective is to get rid of them and expunge them from this organization and any other organization that I can do such a thing. The person that was in the room said to me, it was over, Julia left, it, and it discovered, oh my God, the, the recording machine was on. And to make a long story short, my friend who was in the room said, when the interview went, took place, said that,